He says, I am the way, the way, with the article the. And he says, I am the truth. In other words, I am the completeness of the truth. I am the truth that has come to its full manifestation. God could be God to the world, but to you that believe, he is not just God. To you, he is Father. So to know me is to know my Father. Good morning, good afternoon, good evening, depending on the time of the hour when you are watching this program. Ben Fetcher is my name. Beholding Christ is the show. And I'm delighted to be with you again this wonderful day. It is of the Lord, it is of the Spirit, and it is big. We know that we are here because of the Spirit of God. And I'm excited today. We started on a series on uh, understanding how the Father has been revealed in the New Testament. And we still continue with that same series today. Today is part three of it, how Christ has revealed the Father. But before we get into other details, I want us to pray so that we can move on in Jesus' name. Father, we are so delighted this day that you love us so, so, so much that you have given us a chance so that we can know you even better and know you in a, in a clearer way so that we can relate with you in a clearer way so that we can live lives that are uh, victorious lives with understanding of who we are and who you are to us. We thank you, Lord, for this episode. Thank you, Lord, that we'll have a wonderful time and in understanding your word. We thank you. In Jesus' name we pray. Everyone say amen, 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 amen. So uh, the last time, the last two episodes we shared on how the Father was revealed in the Old Testament, that was the first episode, we say that the Father was revealed in the Old Testament, Old Testament and he revealed himself in diverse ways to different people in different manners. And that is why we see, then, uh, we see him and we see uh, him given different names in different occasions by different people. Like we saw how someone called him Jehovah Rapha, the Lord that he led us, uh, how David know, uh, got to know him as Jehovah Rohi, the Lord our shepherd, and how children of Israel got to know him in different ways at different instances. But they never had the fullness, the full revelation of God. So they only had uh, bits and bits. And what we said, according to Hebrews chapter 1 from verse 1, is that in the Old Testament, Truth was building up. Truth was building up. They didn't have the fullness of the truth. They didn't have the completeness of the truth. But at that point, truth was building up. That is why he was revealing himself in different ways to different people at different periods of times. But now, if you go to John chapter 14, John chapter 14, I'll read verse 6. John chapter 14 from verse number 6. John 14. Verse number six, what we saw in Hebrews is that truth was building up. They didn't have the fullness of truth. Truth had not been uh, established and they had not, it had not been revealed completely. But when we see John 14 verse six, there is Jesus speaking and he says, uh, I am the way, I am the truth, and I am the life. No one comes to the Father except through union with me. To know me is to know my Father too. So. There is something about the truth and the Father. So what they had was the truth that was building up. But in the fullness of time, when Christ came, he came as the fullness of the truth. He says, I am the way, the way, with the article, the. And he says, I am the truth. In other words, I am the completeness of the truth. I am the truth that has come to its full manifestation. Praise be to God. Then he connects the truth, uh, the way, the truth, and the life to the issue or the, or the subject of Father. He says, no one comes to the Father except through me. So to know me is to know my Father. So that is to say the fullness of truth is only, uh, the fullness of truth only comes into realization when God is revealed as Father. In the Old Testament, we never see him revealed as Father, though, they, uh, though the children of Israel are called the children of God, but they knew him as, uh, as the creator God, the almighty God, the all-powerful God, the omniscient, the omnipotent, but they never knew him as Father. Praise be to God. But when the fullness of time come, uh, came, when Jesus himself came, he came as the 
perfection of the truth. He came as the exact representation of the truth. And he says that my, uh, I, uh, to know me is to know my father. And that is what we said the last time. Then we also saw that uh, we have been given the spirit of sonship and we have been made sons. So he is a father and we are sons. Today we continue with the same and we see how Jesus has revealed the father in the new covenant. Praise be to God. And I would like us to, to begin where we, we left last time in the book of Romans chapter 8. Romans chapter 8, I'll read from verse 15. And I want to read using the Passion Translation, the Passion Translation, TPT. Romans chapter 8 from verse number 15. I will start from verse number 14. The Bible says, The mature children of God are those who are moved by the impulses of the Holy Spirit. Verse 15 is of verse of emphasis. He says, and you did not receive the spirit of a religious duty leading you back into the fear of never being good enough, but you have received the spirit of full acceptance. I know the King James says, you have received the spirit of adoption. The TPT say, the, full, the spirit of full acceptance and folding you into the family of God. Wow. And you will never feel orphaned for as he rises up within us, our spirits join him in saying the words of tender affection, beloved father. The King James says, Abba, father, that we have not received the spirit of bondage to fear again, but the spirit of sonship, the spirit of adoption, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. This is the greatest revelation that a human being can have, that God could be God to the world, but to you that believe, he is not just God. To you, he is Father. And he says, we have not received the spirit of, uh, uh, the spirit of bondage to fear again. I like how the... the, the a uh, passion translation puts it says that you did not receive the spirit of religious duty wow you know the coming of christ uh, when christ came he did not come to introduce a religion because religion existed even before christ came that is why we had people like pharisees the sadducees in other words religion was there even before christ came so he did not come to bring a religion. So even Christianity is not a religion per se. Because anytime you see religion, it comes with religious duties, religious rules, religious activities, things that you have to fulfill for you to be in good terms with that supreme being. So Jesus did not bring the, uh, the did, did not bring religion or he did not come to introduce religion because religion was all, already there. That is why he says we did not receive or we have not received the spirit of religious duty. Religion is man trying to reach to God. And when it comes to religion, man has imposed and has created so many ways of trying to reach God. And that is what makes difficult for man to relate with God as father. In the presence of religion, God can never be known as father because he will be known as a supreme being who has given instructions, who has given rules, who has given duties to be performed, responsibilities to be fulfilled so that you can have a relationship with him. So in the eyes and in the presence of religion, God can never be known as father. And what we experience in the hands of religion is fear. Listen to this. He says, you have not received the spirit of religious duty leading you back into the fear of never being good enough. Wow, this is great. He says that in the hands of religion, you'll never feel or you'll never have the experience of being good enough. Why? Because religion comes with so many set of rules, regulations that you have to do this. You have to, uh, you have to pray seven times a day. You have to pray and fast 25 hours a day. You have to do all these things so that you can have a relationship with God. Those are religious duties. And they will, you will never have the experience of being good enough. Why? Because you will always fall short of the standards of religion. Every religion has its own standards. There, is, there are religious 
uh, activities, religious duties, religious requirements. Some of them is like uh, you have to you have to cover your head so that you can relate with God. That is for ladies. Others say you have to uh, for men. You don't have to to do certain things so that you can have a good relationship with God. There are some. Uh, there are some places you cannot be. There are other places you can be. You know, so many religious uh, rules and regulations. And some people, uh, because of religion, some people have turned into church police. They are they are there monitoring. Are you wearing the right kind of uh, the right uh, the right kind of clothes? Are you are you smiling the 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 good way, the glorious or the heavenly way? People because they have created and crafted so many ways, and they have. Uh, on top of the commandments that were given, religion comes up with so many other commandments, so many other rules, such that at the end of the day, you feel like, man, I'm never good enough. I can never be good enough. Because when you thought you have prayed for two hours, you are told, no, you, you must pray for three hours. You see, you can never be good enough. When you thought that you have really read the Bible by reading one verse or reading two chapters, Someone comes and tells you, I have read the whole Bible from Genesis to Revelation. And you feel like, oh my, I can never be good enough. When you think that you have really praised, someone tells you, no, you have to lift your hands in a certain way. You have to do your praises in a certain uh, way. So you feel like, man, this, I can never be good enough. And if you are having such feelings, even right now, you are feeling that you have never been good enough to God. You have never been good enough because of how the, uh, how religion has uh, has dealt with you. You have been condemned. You have lived a life where you feel like I have never been good enough. I've never been praying enough. You know, they, you know, there are places you go and they can never show you anything good about you. They only show you how you've not prayed enough. You have not fasted enough. Uh, and when we started fasting, you you did not complete the fasting, so you have spoiled our whole fasting. And you feel like this thing is hard. This thing is impossible. This thing cannot be done, but I, can, I don't have the ability to do all these things. So you feel like now uh, I cannot help myself. That is the work of religion, to show you how bad you are, how you can never be good enough. And at the end of the day, if at the end of every sermon you listen to, you are wondering, can I? what can I do to become better than this? How can I be better to God than this? How can I please God better than I do? How can I be perfect before God better than I am? If that is the kind of life that you have been living, you have never known God the way Christ has revealed him as Father. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. When people have the wrong understanding of God as father, they will, they will have a bad, they will have a tough relationship with him. Praise be to God. That is how you have seen people. When people get into prayer, they, they change even their style of praying. Like now they turn to the, the King James English and they start praying like, Father, thou hast, knowest, I, thee, you know those words, big words, you think like, that is how to relate with the Almighty, the El Shaddai, the Elohim, the great God, the creator God. So they change their tune and they start shouting. Others, others start shouting and they cannot relate with God as a, as a father because they have been trained. They have been in the hands of religion and religion has told them, uh, has, has manifested and uh, religion has misinterpreted who God really is. And therefore, people who have never known how to relate with God, they see him as a supreme being out there, a judge with a whip waiting for you to sin, to make a small mistake so that he can whip you and punish you. Uh, yesterday, I saw something on, on uh, WhatsApp, a status that was trending from someone. It was saying that as a, as a guy, one who understands one who has a good relationship with the father and another one who has a bad relationship with the father. The guy was saying, I have messed up. I cannot face my father. The other one was saying, I have messed up. I have messed up. I have to call my father. You see those two different perspectives of, uh, of father. One understands that the only way and the, the only way to solve his issues and his messes is by talking to the father. The other one thinks like, if, I, if my father gets to know this, man, I'm cooked. And that is how pe many people relate with God. If, my, if God gets to know this, if God gets to know my mistakes, if God gets to know my shortcomings, if, if God gets to know my, my weaknesses, I'm cooked. 
No, 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 no. That is not how God wants you to relate with him. He does not want you to relate with him like he is, uh, he is far away. He is not closer to you. He, he doesn't want you to relate with him with the bondage of fear. But he wants you to, to relate with him expressly like a father relates to the child. And I'm, I, 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 uh, I would like to say something, and I believe you'll agree with me. I don't know whether you have ever seen any child going to the father Maybe the father is in the bedroom and the kid is in the sitting and the kid runs to the bedroom to speak to the father and the kid gets into the door where the, the, the door to the father's bedroom and the kid starts saying, my father, my father, here stands your son. Can I come in? No, 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 no. That is a misunderstood relationship. Actually, what happens is that the kid doesn't care whether whatever the father is doing. He knows that he is my daddy. He is my father. So wherever he is, whatever he is doing, I don't care. To the world, he may be uh, he may be a businessman. He may be an employer to others. He may be a pastor to others. He may be a reverend to other people. But to me, he is father. So he goes direct to his father and and he says and he tells him what he desires. So in the same way, that is how God wants us to relate with him. He has been revealed to us by Christ as father. And he says, he doesn't, us to, he doesn't want us to get back into the fear of never being good enough. That is why he has, he has, we have received, uh, we are still in uh, Romans chapter 8, verse 15. I'm reading from the Passion Translation. He says, you have received the spirit of full acceptance. Oh my God. You have received the spirit of full acceptance acceptance. This is God speaking to you that he fully accepts you. Mm, Sela. Sela means think, uh, stop and think for a moment. That he has, he has accepted you fully. Someone will come and tell you, but you have not been good enough, but you have these weaknesses, you have these shortcomings, you cannot pray even for two hours, uh -huh, you don't dress accordingly, the church, the, the church pastor doesn't like you, and all those things. But the Father tells you today that he has fully accepted you. You know what? The moment I understood this thing, I was liberated. It was like a, uh, a breath of fresh air that for a long time I have been trying to please God. I have been working and I'm working hard to have my books, uh, to have good books with God. But now he says, it is not about you. It is about me. And he says, I have fully accepted you. Listen to what he says. But you have received the spirit of full acceptance and folding you into the family of God. Child of God, you belong to the family of God. Many of you have the mentality that I belong to the courtroom, that I am before God, he is the judge, and I have sinned against him. Many of you have the mentality of being in a courtroom, but this is the, the gospel truth. When Christ died, you are take, when Christ died and he was buried and he was raised from the dead, you are taken from the courtroom. You are not uh, under the judgment of God. You are taken from the courtroom and now you belong to the family. Hallelujah. You no longer belong to the courtroom waiting for judgment because all judgment was taken by Christ. He says that when the Son of Man is lifted up, he will draw all judgment to himself. All judgment, all punishment, everything that was needed to punish your sin, your sin was punished on the body of Christ. Stroke after stroke, he was beaten. He died. He was separated from God. All judgment, he took it by himself. Why? So that you may be accepted before God. You may be accepted by God. He says, you have been accepted and you have, been, you have been made part of the family of God. Hallelujah. Because God is your father and God is a family man and God has children. You are one of the sons of God. John 1, 12 says, To them that believed him and accepted him and received him, to them gave he power to become sons of God. Today, God is your father. He has been revealed as a father to us. Hallelujah. They never knew him as father, but Christ has revealed him as father to us. Amen. I read John chapter 14. John chapter 14. Uh -huh. John chapter 14 from verse number 25. Sorry, John chapter 17. John 17, verse number 25. John 17, verse 25. 
Listen to the words of Jesus. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. John 17, verse number 25. This is Jesus speaking. And he says, You are my righteous father. But the unbelieving world has never known you in the perfect way that I know you. So what is the perfect way of knowing God as the righteous father? Have you known God as the righteous father? These are the words of Jesus. He says, you are my righteous father. The unbelieving world has never known you. The world can never know God because they don't believe in him. But to those who believe in him, he has been made father. Listen, he says, you are my righteous father, but the unbelieving world has never known you in the perfect way that I know you. So the perfect way of knowing God is knowing him as father. It is good you know him as the, uh, as uh, you know him as, Elohim. It is good you know him as Jireh, the one who heals you, uh, the one who provides for you. It's good you know him as Rapha, the one who heals you. It's good you know him as Shalom, the Lord of our peace. It is good you know him as uh, as a Tzidi Kenu, the Lord of our righteousness. You know him as Jehovah Rohi, the Lord of our shepherd. But it is perfect that you know him as Father. Woo, glory. I'm excited this day. He says, and all those who believe in me also know that you have sent me. Listen there. Uh, listen to this uh, order, he says, I, uh, you are my righteous father and in a, uh, I have known you in the perfect way. The unbelieving world cannot know you and have not known you. But those who believe in me, they can know you because now they know me. I have revealed to them who you are and I will continue to make you even more real to them, oh glory to God, so that they may experience the same endless love that you have for me, for your love will now live in them, even as I live in them. Praise be to God. He says that you are my righteous father, but the unbelieving world has never known you in the perfect way that I know you. So as we end this episode for today, I want you to know this, that the best and the perfect way to know God is to know him as father. Hallelujah. And the greatest prayer that you can pray, as we saw in Romans chapter 8, verse 15, I quote the King James says, for we have not received the spirit of, ad uh, the spirit of bondage to fear again, but the spirit of adoption, the spirit of sonship, whereby we cry, Abba, Father. Some translations say, beloved Father. And the, the original rendering means Daddy God. Hallelujah. The greatest way to know God is to know him as Father. And when you call him Father, he hears you. Just in the same way, those of, uh, those of us who are fathers, when your kid shouts, Daddy, you'll hear him and you'll stop everything you're doing and attend to him. In the same way, you may not have all the powerful, the King James words to speak to you, to God. You may not have the, the, the best uh, formulas to speak to God. But the moment you say, Daddy, he will stop every business to attend to you. Why? Because you are his son. Because you are his child. Right now, whatever is happening in your life, just call on Daddy. He cares for you. Daddy watches over you. Daddy cares for you. Daddy loves you. And he knows the best for you. You may be in a, in a, in a situation of confusion, maybe in a situation of sickness. You are not feeling well. I speak to you right now and I declare, because Daddy loves you, he will give you everything that you need for life and godliness. And actually, he has been given, provided in Christ Jesus. And he will cause you to enjoy divine health, divine provision, because he is daddy. Hallelujah. Shall we pray? We are so excited, daddy, that you love us this much, that we no longer have to try to be good because you have made us good because you are good and you are our good father. We choose to rest in your shoulders. We, we choose to rest in your loving kindness, oh daddy, because you love us so much. And whatever may be bothering any one of us, we thank you because as we call on daddy, you pay attention to our call and you answer us. We thank you for you love us and we love you back, daddy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen, amen. This has been Beholding Christ Show. My name is Ben Fetcher. I call you blessed because indeed you are blessed. Amen. Amen.